Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone, to Alpha Beta Soup. I'm TXMC. Well, today, I'd like to talk about something a little different. Over the last few months, we've been unpacking a lot of economic data as we try to understand where we're at in the economic cycle, what's going on in the world, and just to satisfy our general curiosity. And along the way, there have been some interesting findings that I haven't been able to fit into one of the other topics from previous videos, but I thought today, as I am currently traveling, it would be a great opportunity to spend a few minutes looking at some things we haven't gotten to discuss in detail yet. And they relate to the U.S. labor force, the people working the jobs, and how they've changed over the years. So don't go anywhere. We've got some cool charts to look at and some interesting things to discuss. If you enjoy this content, please give my video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's talk about it. So what we've got on the screen here in front of you are a couple of metrics. Now these labor data points I'm gonna talk about are for the United States workforce specifically. And then what we've got here up at the top of the screen is a chart you might be familiar with from a previous video. What we're looking at is the unemployment rate colored by US consumer sentiment. And I'm showing it really as a companion to what I want to focus on, which is the one on the bottom. This is the labor force participation rate. This is the amount of people who are of appropriate age to be workers that are actively participating in the labor force. If you look back here, this data begins in 1970. Throughout the 70s and 80s, labor force participation was rising quickly, and this was due in large part to the growth of the boomer generation. From 1945 to the middle 1950s, there was a boom in the U.S. population as soldiers returned home from war to start new families, and there was an explosion of new U.S. households. So as that new generation was getting into their 20s and into their 30s, labor force participation was rising, and the United States had very strong demographics behind its labor force. And what has begun to happen here in the 21st century is a bit of a reversal of that trend. So you can see here on the screen, labor force participation peaked around the year 2000, and it's been declining ever since. And it really began to accelerate around 2010, which is 65 years after the end of World War II and the beginning of the boomer generation. So around 2010, around here, is where members of that boomer generation, which was so far the largest generation in American history, they began reaching retirement age of 65 and older. And we saw a swift fall off in labor participation, down from where it had been up around 60 66% down to 62, 63%. Now, when you think about this as a percentage of a couple hundred million people, that's a big change over a few years. Here's a look at the effects on labor force participation from 1998 to 2020. And we've got all these different factors here. When you see a positive value, that means that this reason is what is helping to add to labor force participation. It's a reason that a person surveyed cited for why they're working. Now, the most of the time, people usually answer family responsibilities as the reason why they're working. And that makes sense, right? That's kind of the baseline human reason to want to work. But there are also a lot of drags on labor force participation, and they've been picking up since 2000, like we were talking about back here. This was really kind of the peak of participation. The leading reasons for the reduction in the labor force from 2000 to 2010 were kind of a toss-up between disability and illness and people going to school. Those two tended to be the main reasons folks left the workforce. But what we began to see around the year 2000, which is right here when this line crosses into the negative, retirement began to accelerate as a net drag on labor force participation. And look how quickly it has accelerated. And that's from 2010. That's the year that I pointed out that the earliest boomers hit retirement age, right? There's a lot of confluence here between the data points. And ever since about 2015, right around here, retirement has been the number one net drag on labor force participation. People leaving the workforce because they're old enough that they want to retire. Here's a look at all those effects on the same chart so you can really visualize it. Here in green is retirement. And if you note, right around this point here, which is 2015, this is when this 
line breaks below all of the others and it's accelerating swiftly down. Now my data ends in 2020, but even without 2021, you can see the clear trend. Retirement is dragging down labor force participation. In part, this has to do with the fact that the entire U.S. population is getting older. And I believe this trend of people entering retirement, of the workforce getting older, is going to accelerate over the coming decades, not slow down. Here's a look at the changes to the population divided by some different groups. And it's a five-year rolling change. So this first value, this orange line, is total population. Now you can see population growth, it stayed kind of steady through the 60s and all the way into the 90s. But it's been declining since then. And part of that has to do with falling fertility rates, falling birth rates. We're having children less frequently and people are living longer. We're multiplying at a slower rate than we were before, even though there are more of us now. So the growth in population, while it's still positive, it's still above zero, which is down here, you can see it's gradually declining on a five-year rolling basis since the middle 90s. This blue line represents the total labor force, the growth in the labor force on a five-year basis. The trend here is unmistakable. Labor force growth really stalled out in the late 70s as the boomer generation reached like prime working age. And that was around the time we were also seeing declining birth rates here in the 60s and the 70s, which we'll look at in just a minute. This red line is the working age population, which is very similar to the total labor force, but it includes people who might not actually be in the labor force. But because they're between the ages of 15 and 64, they're considered working age population. Again, pretty steady growth for the most part until the early 2000s when the growth of the working age population began to decline. Now here's the real kicker. This is the population over the age of 65. So if you'll recall, 65 is pretty much retirement age. I think they're trying to move it up to 67 now, but 65 is where it was for ages. Now this is the growth of people over the age of 65 as a cohort of the population. So when you see this group growing, that's because people are getting older and they're becoming 65. And look what it has been doing since around 2005, just exploding. The workers, the laborers, the ones toiling away at the offices and the factories and the shops, that's the labor force. It's growing less quickly. Working age population, eligible workers in this cohort growing less quickly, population growing less quickly. But senior population expanding. Expanding. Some of this comes back to fertility rates, and I've got some global data for us to look at here, and this situation is not isolated just to the United States. Up here at the top, this blue line represents fertility rates, which is births per woman, and it's going all the way back to 1960. You can see the United States, this was after the boomer generation, 1960, and fertility rates were still well over three. So the average woman was having three or four children all the way through into close to 1970 when it really got down to about two and a half. And since then, basically since the middle 1970s, the US has been hovering around two children per woman. In the last maybe 20 years, it started to break lower and it's on a downtrend, a pretty solid downtrend. But if you look at other nations, they're all doing the same thing. We all had higher fertility rates in the middle 20th century and they are declining in almost every major cohort. Here's China, here's the European Union, started at 2.6. Here's Japan, they started much lower and they're trending lower as well. And here's the United Kingdom. So this is happening across the world. Down here at the bottom, I have the same data, but it's grouped into two different buckets. We've got high income countries in the blue and in yellow, it's the less developed countries. I'm not 100% sure what the categorization is there, but, but I imagine it has something to do with GDP per capita or something like that. But you can see higher income nations started around three and they've been declining down to about half of that from 1960 to now. And in less developed countries, they've had a similar trend, though it's not cut by 50%. It's more like 35, 40%, down from almost seven children per woman to 3.9. 
in some part, people used to have more children because child mortality rates were higher, disease rates were higher, just general mortality rates were higher. So people had more children because unfortunately some children died more often than they do in modern times. So seeing lowering fertility rates isn't necessarily portending some kind of doom, but it shows a maturity of the population in some ways. If we look at total world population, so just put it all together on a five-year rolling basis, it's declining as well. So we see the general growth of the world, the amount of people added every year, that rate is slowing down. They're getting older, we're living longer, and we're multiplying less quickly. There are people passing away and being born every day, but the net growth of the human population is trending downwards. It's slowing down from about 11% year every five years down to a little over five and a half percent every five years. Still positive, but growing less quickly as a percentage of population. And a lot of that really feeds into this discovery here, that retirement is a net drag on the labor force, that we have fewer and fewer people participating in economic activity. And I think it leads to some really interesting observations. So this is one of my favorite charts that I've produced in a while. And it's a breakdown of U.S. population and labor force from 1998 to 2020. Now, each of these colored groups represents a different five-year age bucket. It starts from 16 to 19, and it goes all the way up to 70 plus. Now, there's several things that jump out to me here. Up at the top, we've got labor force participation. So this dark line that you see in each one of these groups is labor force participation. And what you'll notice is the younger groups below the age of 25, they've got less labor participation. But by the time you get to the age of 25 or so, you're pretty much at max participation. And it tends to last all the way well into someone's 50s. This is the 50 to 54 group. And from 50 to 59, you see a bit of a reduction in labor force. It falls from the high middle 90s down to an average of around 85 to 90. Part of that is from people retiring early. Once you get to 60 and 64, labor force has fallen off quite a bit more, another 10%, 12% or so. And you've got people lining up for retirement. Once you get over the age of 65, only about half of those people are working anymore. And you can see there's a lot more volatility here. It's not such a consistent trend, whereas the labor force from the ages of 25 to 55, it's much tighter. They have much more of an incentive to stay actively employed. They have less savings. They're still building their lives. Lives, and they're still much younger. They're more able-bodied. But once you get over 65, it's much more murky. And then at the age of 70, labor force participation is all the way down here to about 25-30%. So you can really see the arc of labor across the age spectrum, right? So that's one thing that I find really interesting, that as the population gets older, you can see every five years or so, about 10% less people are working when you look at it through the lens of how old the population is. Now down here, these colored sections. These represent the actual population distribution, the number of people that are in this group at any one of these years from 1998 to 2020. And what you can really see, if you look from the 2024 group up to 50 and 54, this is what I would consider prime working age. You're still able-bodied. You're still building your life. You're not at retirement age yet, but you're old enough to be an adult. And this is the meat of the labor force. And what really is interesting to me is is if you look at the growth of these groups, they really seem to be kind of front-loaded in some cases. Some of the middle groups appear to be pretty front-loaded. Now, in the younger groups, we can see some of the growth of the millennial generation, which themselves is a pretty large generation. But you can see that these younger groups were growing. But many of them, with the exception of maybe this 30 to 34 group right here, many of them saw their peaks a few years ago. These younger 20s groups, they've seen a swell in recent recent years. And so some of these people will begin rolling into 30 and 35 and 35 and 39 over the next decade. But for the most part, these groups in the middle, these prime working age groups, they've seen their growth in a pretty narrow band. Their growth has been, for the most part, pretty much contained to this kind of small area of population. They've got 18 to 20 million, roughly, in each of these groups. They kind of fluctuate around a little bit. You can see like pockets of the population moving through each group over time. 
time. That starts to get a little different when we look at some of these older groups. Now, the thing that really jumps out to me is just how quickly these groups have been growing recently. They've been growing really fast. Now, they started from lower places. Most of these other groups had 18 to 20 million people in them for most of the time that this data was recorded. But these older groups, they started much smaller, but they're growing really fast. And they're growing to about the size of each of our working age population buckets. But the only problem is, these are the groups who participate less in labor, right? Their labor participation is less, especially for every five years they get older. They participate about 10%, 15% less in the labor force. Of particular note in this conversation here is what's going on to the 70 plus group. You see this growth right here? These are people who are over retirement age. There's only 26% of them that are still working and their population is absolutely exploding. And there are now 40 million members of the US population over the age of 70. And if you think about how these groups are rolling up into each other over time, over the next 10 years, there's 20 million in these lower groups. There's another 20 here. So we're looking at 40, 50, maybe 60 million Americans over the next decade that are going to be reaching or surpassing retirement age. And that has a severe headwind for general labor participation. I think this is a really interesting dynamic and I don't think many people are talking about it. What happens to the U.S. workforce in 10 years when we have 60 or 70 million Americans that are so old that they don't want to work anymore? They've decided they want to retire. I mean, look at the growth of each of these groups down here from start to finish. Look how most of them are front loaded. You see that? The number earlier on in the series from the early 90s for most of them is higher than where it is now. So we had a younger population and all of these age cohorts are now weighted towards the back end. Look, each of these declining, these are the prime working age groups and they're all kind of shrinking over time. But once we get up to like 55, 60, 65, these groups start growing. They're rising, they're getting a larger share of the population all the way up to 70 plus, they're really exploding. So I think that this has a couple of implications. The first implication I think it has, it's going to put more pressure on technological innovation to help make up for a lack of expanded physical labor. There's going to be fewer and fewer people who want to work. And as a result, technology is going to need to fill the void because of society's embedded growth obligation. Because we expect GDP to go up every year, we expect asset valuations to go up every year, we expect to have more productive output as a society. So what that means, with less and less people participating, as we have more and more members of these older groups, we need to have technological innovation, robotics, AI, things of that nature, general advances in efficiency and energy production, those kinds of things need to come along and provide some solutions over the coming 10, 12, 15 years. Now, another effect I believe that the aging workforce has is what it's going to mean for people who are forced to re-enter the workforce and what that could do to wages. Now, we've got falling labor force participation, but what if we start to see people over the age of 70 who need to go back to work because of rising costs, right? I think that's an interesting thing to talk about. So what we've got here on the screen, this chart down here is a survey from payments.com and they put out all these really interesting data point surveys. Surveys. This chart here is showing the number of consumers who said that they live paycheck to paycheck at two different points in time. The dark colored box, call it black, that represents May of last year, May of 2021. The lighter colored box on the top represents December of last year, so about seven months later. And what you can see is that each of these income groups, people less than 50K per year, people who make 50 to 100, and people who make more than 100,000 a year, all of them saw an increase in the percentage that we're responding that they live paycheck to paycheck. So we've talked at length on here about growing costs, rising costs, squeezing consumer savings, negative real wages as a result of inflation. And here is another data point supporting that, an increase in people living paycheck to paycheck. Digging into that by age is this graph on the side. And this I think is the kicker. Look which group had the biggest growth in people answering that they live paycheck to paycheck. From May of last year to December of last year. It was the boomers. It was the seniors. It was the people who are of retirement age who don't normally want to work. They've been working their whole lives and now is their time to rest and enjoy themselves and reap the fruits of their labor. More and more of them are saying they're having to live 
paycheck to paycheck, more than 13% additional boomers from May to December are in this situation now. And when we see that that group normally doesn't work, but there are a whole, whole, whole lot of them. I believe we may begin to see over the next couple of years an increase in the number of people working that are of 70 years and older. And they won't be going back to work because they want to. They'll be going back because they have to. And that may have a net disinflationary effect on wage growth. And the reason I say that is because if you are a retired person and you're forced back into the workforce because your retirement budget can't support your living expenses, well, you've already got some income. So when you begin competing with your kids and their kids for the same pool of jobs, you will not be bidding up the wages the same way that a person who's 35, 40, 45 is going to try to bid up the wages for the job they want because you have secondary income. So if we begin to see a rush of people 65, 70 plus re-entering the workforce, it may slow wage growth. And if we're still dealing with rising costs, costs, that may create some crosswinds in labor, and it will be really interesting to see how that plays out. I know we've looked around at some lot of, a lot of interesting data here, and I hope that I've shown you some things that maybe you haven't thought about before. You know, it's really interesting when we see just how many people are retiring, just how much of a drag that is on labor force participation. A labor force participation rate that's been declining for this entire century, since the year 2000. And as our population growth slows, down and our labor force slows down, the population of seniors continues to rise. It introduces some very interesting dynamics to a U.S. economy that is powered by the consumer. So, I hope you found that interesting. I wasn't able to fit that into any of our previous videos, but I've really been looking forward to showing you those charts and talking about that data. If you have any questions or comments for me, make sure to leave them down below and I'll be happy to read them. Make sure you follow me here on Twitter at TXMC Trades. This is where a lot of my thoughts and analysis goes out. Some of it gets pulled into the videos, so you might see it there, but plenty of it doesn't. So make sure you follow me here and on YouTube. I am still traveling. I should be back in early July, and then we can begin talking about what's happened to the market while I'm gone. So until I return, enjoy yourselves, friends, be kind to each other, take care of your families, and we will talk in the very near future. Cheers, everyone.